Hi, it's Mark Langley. Um, I've just this last day of AppsCon and uh, I had the privilege to meet Matt here in a couple of classes and we got chatting about uh, drones and Matt's a very interesting use case uh, with respects to drones because he's mostly in uh, uh, working with, uh, well, why don't you tell us? Sure. So, um, it, our drone program, obviously, as a Texas game warden, uh, game with, warden. with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, we do natural resource conservation, you know, core work. That's, that's what we do. Um, but in Texas, we are also state uh, peace officers. Okay. And so the same tasking that goes with a, a DPS trooper, county sheriff, local local PD, as far as law enforcement authority. And so that just right there gets us into a very broad mission set um, from standard law enforcement, you know, airborne law enforcement work now with the unmanned side, um, but also doing the, the traditional game warden work um, as far as poaching enforcement, that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, additionally, once we kind of back up a little bit from the uh, the law enforcement stuff, we still, as a component within Texas Parks and Wildlife, um, have the ability to use the unmanned aircraft to support other divisions. So whether that's our wildlife biologists, our coastal fisheries management teams, um, mapping for state parks, infrastructure, that type of stuff. So it's a very broad mission set. Um, very, very fun to build out uh, mm -hmm. equipment and training challenging at times. How many guys got flying with your team? Currently I have 50 um, part-time pilots um, okay. that uh, consist of game wardens and park peace officers. Right. And then uh, there's about another 20 or so part-time pilots within the other resource divisions um, that, uh, you know, use it, use the drones for their very specific, you know, niche mission set, whether it's a you know, habitat assessment survey sure. or something. Um, they, they run pretty autonomously, you know, on their own stuff because they're such a, you know, very focalized. It's a great tool. Uh, so prior to having drones, how would you compare your resources, man hours, things to now having drones? I mean, could, could you talk a little bit about the time savings? Because I know there's Oh, be well, yeah, certainly time savings there. Um, so obviously we do have a manned program within Texas Parks and Wildlife, yes. um, you know, helicopters, fixed wing, um, but uh, they're centrally based out of Austin. So, okay. so if you're a, a game warden out in Big Bend, part of Texas, out in West Texas, um, you may or may not have access to, to manned assets yeah. um, in a timely manner. And so just simply being able to now have that drone, you know, in the backseat of your patrol truck, Sure. Um, obviously it makes a world of difference to um, find people in peril or or assess a criminal situation and keep officers safe. Fast deployment. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Dan Schwartzbach. He's, uh, he sits on our board of directors, and he's the one who uh, is the CEO of AppsCon. And he was telling me at last year's AppsCon that there's only like 375, maybe it's up to 400 now, public safety agencies with fixed wing or helicopter assets mm -hmm. in all of the United States, and there's over almost like 18,000 public safety service uh, agencies. So you can see the disparaging uh, numbers there. You can't have an aerial asset um, in all those locations. So drones are kind of filling that void, right, from 400 feet down to ground level? Certainly. Uh, not, not only are they filling that void um, as far as you know, that altitude and, yeah. and mission set, but they're they're also helping to uh, reduce some of the the workload from from the man side. So what we've seen on uh, specific to our helicopters is it wasn't uncommon that uh, a game warden would call like, hey, we have a missing person in this county. Can you send the helicopter out? Well, the flight crew you know has to go through their procedures, spin up the helicopter, go from Austin to wherever this event is, which might be a a, a couple hour response time. Um, now and it, now that we have a drone that is more readily available in that area, um, they can start working that, that mm -hmm. event. If the helicopter is still needed, they can keep coming. But we've seen that the drones have either been able to resolve the situation uh, really fast and we can cancel the helicopter, um, saving their fuel, their, 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 oh, their, huge expense. their airframe hours and stuff like mm -hmm. that, uh, free them up for you know, other calls that we're not going to be able to handle from the man side, you know, vehicle pursuit type type situation. Exactly. It's their, their bread and butter. 
Um, and so that's that's really helped quite a bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's really so. Again, this is a use case that really shows the value of our foundation. Um, the National Public Safety Drone Donation Program was founded. I mean, you guys are well funded for the most part, right? Well, you would think being a state agency that we are. Okay. Um, our uh, our program is very unique in its funding source. Okay. Um, much much like what you all are doing with uh, with your program, as far as agencies in need of yeah. of equipment um, yeah. to do do these good mission sets, um, we we have a little bit of funding, and basically, uh, in all practical purposes, I'm stealing gas out of the helicopter to, to be able to to do certain stuff on the training on the maintenance side of the house on the administrative side okay but when it comes to acquiring new aircraft mm -hmm. um, there's actually a nonprofit organization that supports parks and wildlife okay. as a whole All right. um, and when it comes specifically to how they support texas game wardens um, it's landowners um, who are generously donating to the gear up for game warden program for the through parks and wildlife foundation to be able to acquire this equipment for us, Excellent. that is above and beyond what the department, you know, can can do funding for. Yeah. Um, and so that's great. And so that's why I love what you're doing. Thank you. It's basically um, what on a on a bigger scale for for those, especially those agencies that don't have that yeah. that foundation already in place. Like you know, thankfully we lucked into, and that's that's been key for how we brought in our our canine tracking, you know, certain sure. rescue dogs and obviously the drones as well but um, the that simple um, generous funding mechanism um, like like you're doing uh, is giving you know obviously gave uh, us from from the gear for game wars but you're, you're giving other agencies the ability to prove up this mission set and this capabilities right. to to give that stats to justify to um, you bring up a good point because when drones came into the, you know, airspace, uh, municipalities, everybody's thinking privacy issues, this, 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 and this, but they're not educated enough to understand the value that drones really bring. They're a force multiplier. Like, I don't think any other equipment you could buy at this price point could give you that much more value Certainly. from um, boots on the ground standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a, an event in West Hartford and it was a high school. And one of the kids came up and he says, well, what do you guys use a drone for? He says, how long it would take you to run around this school? And he said, oh, about seven, eight, nine minutes. He says, well, I can get up in the air and see everything within seconds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, situation awareness is everything, especially when it comes to public safety. His, uh, Matt's use case is very, very unique. Uh, and that's why I wanted to interview him because it just shows the value of how drones can really fill a void, save uh, resources. So, uh, you know... No one organization can help everybody, but everybody can help at least one person. And so what we try to do is get people like you involved, supporting our foundation, giving back. And, you know, organizations like Matt's, when they have a budget and they're dealing with limited budget dollars, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. come to us, allow us to quote best possible pricing. Our partners will then in turn donate back to us as a result of that sale where they saved money on the sale. They probably would have paid extra buying it for somebody else. And then what happens is they give back to us and then we give to the departments that have zero funding. I'm talking like the 72% of fire departments in this country that are 100% volunteer. Mm -hmm. Many people don't even realize that statistic exists. Certainly. You know, I was talking to somebody last night at dinner. She said, I can't believe that that's, I never knew that. So, you know, uh, please like, subscribe uh, to what we do. Share this message with others. Please support what we do. If you have an old drone in your department, uh, why don't you, uh, and setting on a shelf, why not donate to us? We have uh, like 350 departments waiting right now across the country. Also, APSCON, amazing, APSA is an amazing organization. If you're within public safety, become a member of this organization. They are doing some great work. Dan sits on our board. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're trying to integrate UAS, <clears throat> you know, this whole floor was dedicated to UAS education. Certainly. Downstairs was manned. And then I sat in on some, some of the manned thing. And what they're doing to just integrate is just amazing work they're doing. Yes. I mean, APSA obviously has the uh, long, history. robust history yeah. on the man side. Um, and, and they obviously realize that they're, you know, 
the unmanned and man are sharing the same airspace. Yeah. Um, there is a lot to be learned from the uh, that the man side can go learn from. Or the unmanned can learn from, from the, the man side because because yeah. they've they've been down those hard lessons learned. Yes. Um, and um, unfortunately, a lot of those were paid. You know, um, sometimes with lives. With lives. Yeah. Um, and so on the unmanned side, we're not you know really putting our lives on the line with our flight. But we are definitely putting our livelihoods on the line with how what we do and how we do it. So being able to um, co co mingle and co co train with the man side at Apscon, yeah. um, and really understand each other's needs, challenges, concerns, and uh, be able to share that airspace safely and, and smartly is is a phenomenal thing. So are you part of the Texas Department of uh, the, the guys who were doing the training in the other room there? Well, where we met. Well, so yeah, we, we met in a class that Texas DPS was, DPS. was teaching. Yeah. Um, we're actually technically separate agencies, okay. um, but our, our manned pilots on from DPS and Parks and Wildlife um, co coexist in the same building, um, the same hangar at, in Austin. Uh, in Austin at Bergstrom mm -hmm. Airport, um, they they cross train all all the time. Great. You know, helicopter hoist rescue, sure? everything. And so naturally, that that legacy that they had on the man side when DPS spun up their unmanned program and we spun up our unmanned program, we were basically brothers already. Sure. And uh, so our policies, our training, everything are very very similar in our methodology and 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 on paper, so that. When that hurricane hits, you know, right. at Galveston, Houston, whatever, right. uh, we're able to to deploy, you know, jointly. Yeah, because you're using it for mapping, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. the things get blown away. Houses, you don't even know what street it is unless you've mapped it in advance. Things like that. Sure. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, we appreciate your service well, and all that you. you do. You guys do some amazing work. So. Um, you, you can hear it from professionals here that drones are making a difference in saving lives. So if our foundation can give one drone away to a department that is doing uh, bingo nights and bake sales to purchase life-saving hardware, and you can help us, or if you're a corporation, why not sponsor us? Help us do what we do so we can keep people like this safe, and uh, together we can all make a difference one donation at a time. Again, thank you for your service. Appreciate all that you do, and let's stay in touch. I'd Certainly. like to learn more. If I'm down in Texas, I'd love to pay yeah, a visit. Come on. All right. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share this video. Appreciate your support.